Technology Project. I'll be talking to Kevin Cox from White Label Personal Cloud. Kevin, how are you today? Pretty good, thanks, mate. Look, thanks very much for taking part in the small interview project with me. Um, look, White, White Label Personal Clouds, tell me, what, what is it you do? Yeah, it's a funny name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Um, um, we're in the verification of identity business, okay. um, electronic verification. Um, I, I had another business called Identity, which, uh, which I formed about um, in 2004. Uh, which has turned out to be quite successful. Um, identity started out as a, veri as, as a verification of identity thing. So if you go along to Sportsbet or um, Australia Post and you need to electronically verify yourself, you're probably using identity. Right. Um, about a year ago, um, uh, I realised that identity was had gone down a particular track and I wanted to go somewhere else. So right. I talked to my other shareholders and we agreed that um, they would buy me out and I would start a new business and they would also put money into the new business as well. Okay. So, um, th and the new business really is about extending the idea of electronic verification so that you can do more with it. Right. And in particular, what we will enable people to do is to be able to move information from one organisation to another organisation in a privacy friendly manner. Right. So, for example, you now go to uh, get a loan yep. and you have to produce all these documents. And so you have to wander around everywhere and make photocopies and yep. sign things and so forth. All that fun stuff. And all that fun stuff. Well, we'll enable you to do that sort of thing from your PC okay. electronically. And will that then go across the board of different organisations that need that information? Any, any organisation that wants to do it and that you agree to do it and that they agree to right. let, it, let it happen, um, uh, we can facilitate that and do that. Uh, we actually don't produce the applications that sit on top of our technology. We're the underlying infrastructure. Okay. Yep. Uh, but some of the other applications are things like you change your address or your contact details and you want to tell everyone with whom you have yep. your address yep. to change your address. Okay. So that will be another application. Okay. Um, so who's, who's, your, who's your target client? Who, who... Our target clients are people who build applications. Right. Okay. So um, we have to build some ourselves in order to, to do this. But sure. For example, today I was just talking to some people who, um, you know, we've got this Problem about uh, collecting um, GST on yep. overseas goods. Yep. Uh, we have a solution to that problem okay. uh, that we think that the ATO may be interested in. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure, Jerry Hart would be interested too. <laughs> 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 yeah. Getting get back to your and pays their GST. Yeah. Okay, so is it ready to go? Is it at market now, or is it still in concept? Or uh, no, we have the we have the basic product, yep. and now what I'm out there doing now is that I'm out there selling um, uh, to developers to use our system. Right, okay, so it's a fairly sort of highly niche product, so maybe your target market is fairly... Yeah, it's, um, the, the uses of it are extensive, Yeah. Um, but the the particular people that we go for, because we can't afford to develop all yep. the different products, so the that's relatively restricted. Right. right? Um, so the average person isn't even going to be aware of your company? You know, uh, the they probably will exists. be. Yeah. yeah, they probably will be um, because one of the, uh, with our partners, it won't be one of the products that's going to come out is going to be a thing called Unique right. IDs, which are U-N-E-K, okay. which uh, you can have a unique ID with any organisation, like your okay. organisation. Yep. Yep. So you can make sure that your mailing lists only have one mailing list person in it that so oh, okay. I don't get several yeah. several letters okay. and so forth. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that sounds, sounds exciting. Yes. Um, obviously, you know, this, this is a new a new business or a fairly new business for you, but it's an, e an extension of other stuff. So I guess uh, my first question is, why did you go into business in the, in the first place? And is, it, is there a history before your other company as well? Um, yeah, well, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty old to be to be starting up new businesses. People seem to think I'm a bit crazy. Um, but Look at day over 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, I was the first of my generation in my family to ever go to university. Okay. Uh, and, and when you go to tertiary education, at least in those days, you actually 
who actually didn't go into business. Yep. You became an employee. Um, and so I was trained as an engineer and I became an engineer and so forth and so sure. on. Um, and you get, but my family were all small business people and builders and farmers and shopkeepers and right. all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, so I'm in a sense was a bit of a black sheep. And so I'd always been attracted to it, but you get, you get golden handcuffs yeah. uh, when you work for somebody else, <laughs> somebody else yep. and you don't have any other worries about it. So when I'd retired, um, uh, uh, then I thought, oh, well, I'll go off and I'll go off and become a small business man. Okay, excellent. Um, if you had your time over again, would you change anything? Probably not. Yeah, so you sort of follow yeah. the same path of yeah. working first. Yeah, and it's um, it's much easier to do it when you're older yep. because your responsibilities, your, your wife wouldn't agree with this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but essentially your responsibilities have gone and so you can take more risks sure. in a sense. So it's, and it, and it is risky yep. going into business. Definitely. And um, uh, so it's it's easier if you don't have to worry about mm. your income. So yeah, much yeah, no, exactly. Rather than sort of starting off as a, as a young person with no assets yeah, or cash behind them. Really difficult, yeah. really, really difficult for people yeah. to do that. Okay. Um, what's your biggest challenge in business, Kevin, either currently or in sort of some past experiences? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be my next business. Yeah. Um, the biggest challenge has been um, uh, persuading people to invest money in the business yeah. because mm, the sorts of businesses that we're going into, you actually, they actually don't stay small for very long. Right. They actually, you get, they grow bigger yep. um, because once you get them going, then they become quite large. Yep. And that requires finance. And so you, when you start off in these types of business, particularly these innovative type businesses where you can get by for a little while yeah. with not too much money, yep. but now you've got to persuade people to get, to give you money to to keep it going, and we now it becomes, point. becomes very difficult to keep control uh, and get money. Sure. And and the the system of finance, the way in which we finance investments, particularly for small business, I think is fundamentally flawed. And I've got some ideas on how to fix that. Okay. So you've got a magic solution for getting getting. I've got a magic perfect. solution, and Excellent. that'll be that'll be the next business. Oh, okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how, how do you balance working on the business versus in the business? Oh, it's it's uh, again, I'm old enough that, that it's just my hobby, I guess you say. It's it's uh, it's um, it's not a problem. Right. Yeah. So do you sort of structure it in any way, or do you have a do you have a, a process or a strategy that you you apply that you know you work X number of hours in versus on, or your certain mm -hmm. days of the week you're more working on growing the business rather than the actual doing? No, it? I just I just uh, just have a good balance. Yeah, we, we it's um, you know, we we tend to go on holidays and then we tend to do business while we're on holidays as okay. well. But it, it doesn't really interfere too much. Okay, so you've worked out that balance quite yeah, well. Yeah, okay. it's not a problem. Excellent. It's uh, one thing that a lot of people don't do very well at sometimes. Yeah. Um, and my final question for you, Kevin, is um, what advice would you have for somebody who is thinking about starting starting up in business? Um, I think you do have to be. You, you do have to be prepared to take risks and uh, you have to be prepared to fail yep. um, and and that that when you fail that's going to be a, a great learning experience you know? yep. so you, you 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 shouldn't expect necessarily for your businesses to to, to start off and prosper initially yep. particularly the first one sure uh, because it becomes it there is a lot of there's a lot of learning involved in doing these things, and the sort of stuff that you don't get taught, and I don't think you can get taught. Yeah, it's not not something that it's something that you have to experience in order to do it. And what what about people who do fail on that first instance, and yeah, and then sort of think, oh shit, it's all too hard, and throw, well, throw it away? Is that just part of the that's, cycle? That's or? part of the cycle. Yeah. yeah, and it is too hard for some people. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of people who. It's just not the right lifestyle for them, yeah. um, and they are much more comfortable in a, in a, in a regular paid employment. Sure, it probably come back, comes back to that point you made earlier, where you know, having that that life 
experience and actually working and getting some funds behind you, but obviously limits the, the failure rate. Yeah, and that's it, it, most businesses, from my observation, tend to fail not because because they don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. Essentially, um, yeah. it's not necessarily because it's a bad idea. It's because they can't get the money at the right time. Yeah, to fund their growth or their, to fund their growth or yeah. to to get over the over the curve at which you've got enough customers to actually sure. pay things. Okay, Kevin. Thank you very much and good luck with everything for, for White Label Personal Clouds. Thank you.